so it's finally in, but that's okay. I'm going to get started because I have a lot of information. Hacking is 30 minutes and gets you off, so you actually have a little break between this and the next session. How, how, how was your first session? Good. Your first session was good. Did you have a little echoey? Yeah. yeah. Hopefully they can do it. I think they did the face and maybe a little bit better, so we'll see. Okay, so um, I'm Candy Hyde, Superstar Director of Bendy Business for seven years, and home is where the military sent me. So I'm super excited to be back here in my home state, presenting and doing a world tour and hey, Tex Mex. Woo! Tex Mex! Yes. Yes. Thank you, yes. So who here is from Texas? What about Oklahoma? Yeah! I'm living in Oklahoma City now. I started my sense of business in South Korea. I've been in Texas and now we're in Oklahoma. This year we'll probably do some other different. So <laughs> welcome to everybody. Um, now, are there any other military or um, first responder family here? Woo! Stand Whoa! up. We want to clap for you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I've been military spouse for 17 years, so it's absolutely a sacrifice and we change you. Okay, so today we're talking about fear, right? We're so excited. Um, I want to hear from you to start off. So that we kind of know where we're coming from, what we're talking about today, get our heads wrapped around this idea of fear. So tell me in your business, what are some things that cause you fear? Shout out. Talking in front of people. Talking in front of people. That's me. <laughs> Rejection. Rejection. What else? Leading. Leading. That's a good one. What else? Oh, 
So, um, knowing those things and, and getting to that deep root can feel really challenging. It can feel pretty brutal, but it's really important because that honesty is really vital. Because we can tell stories to our sponsors, to our upline, to those around us, but it isn't serving you to tell stories to yourself. It's not serving you anymore. You have to stop. You have to recognize and stop it. Okay, number two, truth. What's your truth? This is a little bit longer one, okay? So bear with me. This one is, I'm going to start with a little bit of an example. So a couple years ago, I started doing those personal scent crates. You know, like the whiz boxes, but you clean them yourself. They were so well received that all of my PRV could be covered with just the crates, which means I didn't have to party as much. I didn't have to network as much. I didn't have to do events as much. I didn't have to do as much of the hard work. So I let myself slack a little bit. We all know that whatever we're doing today in our business, we're going to see the benefits, or not so much benefits, in about three months. That's how it works, okay? If you're really working your business hard today, you're not gonna see the results of that tomorrow. It's about three months or so. So what do you think happened to me whenever I started, stopped doing all of those things in three months? Right, like everything, the pool of people for recruiting and joining and, um, and sales started drying up a little bit. And so it's really important that you get to the truth of what is happening. Okay, so I no longer had that pool. So instead of considering what I was doing wrong, what my brain did was create excuses to help keep me from fear, and I allowed it. So hear that again. Your brain sort of gave you that scapegoat, it gave it out, kind of like a coaxing your ego a little bit. Like, it's okay, this other thing was happening over here. Yeah. And those are the excuses that we tell ourselves. So what are some lies that you think that we typically say here? Like everyone wants to, everybody uh, is stocked up. It's a day month, it's a slow month. Um, no one wants to buy. We know all those are not truths. It's just something we do to, to make ourselves feel a little better. So finally I called myself out on those lies and I didn't allow them anymore and that shift happened. So our internal monologue, what do you want to name her? Lulu? Yeah. Okay, Lulu. I don't want to say Karen because I might be some Karen's in the audience. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Karen. I got you. Lulu. Okay, so um, Lulu will spiral fear into a version of your truth that is completely unrecognizable. Who's ever spiraled down? Spiral down, and you are telling yourself things that are not true, and you have to learn to stop. So let's use a scenario that Lulu would tell us, and then we're going to talk our way back to reality with some truths with some volunteers from the audience. So if you have one of those things that I need to read, go ahead and come on up here. So to get us back to reality with some truths, we have a few volunteers in there walk up. Now, we want to hear some feeling and attitude behind this, okay? <laughs> um, so again, what we're doing is you all they're not really in order, okay? So again, this is the situation, okay? All of these people have actually said um, to themselves, I've asked absolutely everyone in my tiny, itty bitty little town that already has a million consultants and no one wants to join. Who's heard that? You're the who's heard that? Who said it? Oh, you don't have Okay, so with that in mind, this is whenever you have to say, okay, stop. What are some truths here? So I'm going to hand the microphone down and you can just go down the line, okay? Truth is, I saw two people in one day with a census sticker on their car, and I call that saturation, when in fact, I searched them and neither are active, and I haven't seen one on another car since. What? Still see that. Okay. Truth is, in my tiny town, it actually has 20,000 people in it. The planet has billions, and I've only asked three people to join ever. It's close, but not that close. But that's not everyone. Close. Close. <laughs> Truth is, it's not all about me, and I don't own all the fear. Being nervous and scared is a selfish action 
because you've turned a conversation that should be all about them to being all about how it serves you best. Uh-oh. That hit on me. <laughs> Truth is, I know others are just lucky. No one was born a recruiter. They have fear like I do. They just put in more practice and effort than me. But I can do that too if I'm willing to put in the work. <laughs> When you get scared, you five, four, three, two, one it. It became kind of a 
uh, verb in the sense world. And like, you know what? I'm just going to five, four, three, two, one, that thing. Van Gogh said, if the voices in your head say you can't paint, then you silence them by painting. It's pretty good, right? You see, what happens is that by taking action, you give your brain evidence to boil down all those magnified fears into truths. So listen to that one time. By taking action, you give your brain proof that it's acting insane, first of all, and that it can then focus on what's, in truth, what's true. All right, we're going to move to number seven, preparation passion. If any of you listen to my training, you know I love talking about cupcake shops. So let's go there. If you own a cupcake shop, right, imagine that, your success is greatly tied to the new customers walking in your door, of course. So what would you do to prepare, to show them your passion, to, you know, maybe even help a few of them to realize that they want to be cupcake owners too? What are some things? Shout out. Samples. Samples, yes. What's the name of this one? Preparation of passion. <laughs>
You can find an answer to any of your challenges. The point is everything is figure out. Anybody read that book? No, oh, okay, that's one. Okay, the fear that you need to, oh, let me see what time it is. All right, back to the minutes, guys. Okay, so the gear that you need to successfully control this fear, speaking around with the solutions, is going to be different for all of you, okay? Who um, hates to hear no in here? Right, all of you. If you did raise your hand, you liars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a people pleaser and ridiculously competitive, so I do not want to hear the word no. So I can't really change that evergreen part of me, but what I do have control over is figuring out a workaround and creating an environment where rejection is minimal and people ask me to join. People ask me to host. Who would like that? Yeah. Right? So there's some things that you can do there. Just a couple little points is I constantly plant long-term seeds of confidence in every single sale. So I might say something like, okay, well, let me get you your total salary. I'm sure people tell you this all the time, but you'd be amazing at my job. Robert would do better than me. Okay, so your total's $100, whatever. Those are long-term seeds of confidence you're just planting. And when that's going to germinate, it may not be whenever you ask them again. It might be when they have a big life change that requires them to think, I wish I had more freedom in my life. I wish I had more money. That's when those things happen. Uh, next is book your host with the terminology of, you know what, it just makes sense to do this, versus you know, like, change your life, life-changing opportunity today. That sounds fake. That sounds direct salesy, right? And instead, I think, like, it's just an obvious thing. You don't want to do it. Cool. But it just makes sense for you. Next is using your social media platform as an attraction business marketing tool. So a little homework for you here is I want you to go to your social profile, your last 10 Facebook posts, your Instagram grid, and look at it from the perspective of other people that are looking to join you and see what would they sum up about you. Will they want to join you? It's a good question. Okay, nine, I'm gonna go through this one pretty fast. This is acting the part. Um, you, I'm going to skip this part, okay, so I went from pitching $40 million dollar campaign at the Pentagon to 12 generals and a master's degree to selling Scentsy and creating the environment, right? It was super hard for me, but what helped me is to act like a director from day one. I didn't know what I was doing, but I did. And something about that was a catalyst to manifesting conversations, networking opportunities that led to those peer reviews that recruits that helped me to promote to direct in that first year. All right, I'm gonna move on to number 10, and this is the last one, okay? Almost done. 10 is support system. So first I want you to get out your phone, we're almost done, and I want you to pull up your Facebook or your Instagram profile, okay? Now while you're doing that, is anyone else here a total impact where you take on the feelings of those around you? Yeah, right, You? We are the product of the five people that you spend the most time with. That's fact. So really, we're all kind of impacts. Through my seven years, there's been some really hard times that I wanted to quit, and those friendships even outside of my group 100% saved me. And we continually elevated each other over the year, over the years. Um, you heard the like rising tide versus all boats, like both. Most recently, out of the nine that I talked to, almost every single day, seven of us are going to Amsterdam on the top of the 50 trip in a couple of weeks. So it's that kind of a community that continually push each other, don't let each other tell them their lies, that are really important. And those connections are really important for you. So what I want you to do before you go is I want you to get your phone and take pictures of those around you, profiles, and then friend request each other, okay? Create these communities, these places where you can lift each other up, these places that you can find those that are going to be on the same path that you are, that we want to go where you are. <laughs> so with that, I'll let you do that and um, get out of here. Thank you so much for coming today. Have a great rest of your